Hello, everyone. I'm here with Clinton Smith, and Clinton's going to tell us a little bit about his time at the Domic. Hi, Clinton. How are you doing? Hey, I'm great. It's lovely to be here. Fantastic. Where are you right now in the world? I am in Decatur, Georgia, which is part of Atlanta Metro. Okay, fantastic. So where are you conducting these days? I work mainly these days as a freelance opera conductor. So here in Atlanta, um, I'm on the music staff at Santa Fe Opera. Mm -hmm. And um, during the year, I just kind of bounce around from gig to gig. <laughs> as we all hope to in different forms, right? So can you tell us a little bit about your time? Like when, when were you first at Madomic actually? When were you first there? I was at Madomic 20 years ago. So I believe it was the fifth summer and it was at the original camp location on the, at the Madomic camp, which is different from where it is now. But actually when they moved to the second location, my second summer, um, I got to see the kind of experience both. Right, that's fantastic. And when you look back on that experience, what words might you use to describe? If you had to pick three words to describe your time at Madama, what three words might you use? For me, three words would be um, intense, peaceful, and connection. Intense, peaceful, and connection. So can you talk to us about intense? I would say the experience was very intense for me because it was my first time conducting anything in public ever. Um, I was 19 years old and um, kind of, at, I just was drawn to Madomic because it was accessible and it was a place where even a beginner was welcome. Um, so it was a very intense experience for a 19 year old. Right. The setting and the Atmos that Ken creates, however, is very peaceful and he always encourages um, participants to enjoy the peaceful nature of the space mm -hmm. there. Um, so this is interesting, like, you know, intense moments and then very introspective, peaceful moments too. And then um, connection is sort of what the whole place is about. Connection to one another, connection to the music, to nature, um, to the teaching. I think that's kind of the word that, the best word to describe the whole experience is connection. Mm -hmm. And were there any, can you maybe talk about an important experience of connection or describe it that you had while you were there or just an important experience? It was interesting that this group of strangers felt so close to one another by the time we left the place. And it's true that I still am in touch with many mm -hmm. participants, even 20 years later. Um, different backgrounds, different skill sets, different ages, and the playing field was sort of beautifully leveled. And that was the first time I had ever really experienced that with, um, with such a diverse group of people. How do you think it came to be that the playing field was leveled, even though there were ages all over the spectrum, men, women, abilities all over the spectrum? What, what accounts for that leveling of the playing field at Madonna? I think the first day or two, I mean, this is 20 years ago, but <laughs> as, I recall, as I recall, Ken uh, set an atmosphere of um, inclusion and uh, you know, leave, we were instructed to kind of leave our egos outside. And, you know, I, um, was nervous as a, as a youngster. And so I think everybody brought their own experiences, but then we were, we were told like, um, in order to get the fullest experience, we kind of have to treat each other as equals and, mm -hmm. and be open to the experience. Right. Right. And that, that happened apparently because 20 years later, you can still. <laughs> it did. Yeah. It really did. So it was... Uh, yeah, it was fascinating. I mean, to hear uh, different, different people's experiences from different parts of the world, um, you know, but at the end of the day, we all kind of had similar um, structure in terms of study and in terms of our lessons right. uh, and the teaching and swimming in the lake. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So 
let's go from swimming in the lake, which maybe represents one one side and its potential diametric opposite, which is that being that being really challenged. How are you really challenged? Unless swimming is a real challenge for you, which it might be. Yeah, no, no. Well, I I mean, because I was so young when I first came to Madamic, um, everything was a challenge, really. I mean, I didn't know how to properly prepare a score or move my hands or what to, or how to be in front of people. I played violin in orchestras for years up until this point. So I kind of, um, that's how I came to it. Mm. But, you know, I don't know, there was just, it was intensely challenging and, uh, and that was fascinating. Right. And can you talk about, um, in terms of being a person with no, pre not a lot of previous experience of conducting, what were some of the specific challenges of that, of not being a conductor at that point, surrounded by other conductors of various abilities? What was challenging about that? I, hmm. There was, there was an intense level of anxiety and nervousness being in front of musicians, mm -hmm. um, but, I always felt like we were all there to serve the music and that the music was the motivator for what, what we were doing. And as long as we were in touch with what the music was telling us, then, you know, nothing else really mattered. <laughs> so you're, that, yeah, that, and that's something that has been spoken about at Madamic. I remember from my time there as well too, is you allow the music to feed you in those moments when you are being challenged or when you're standing up and you don't know, you know, for me conducting as well too, uh, I might be nervous about a, a performance and then I start studying and I realize, oh, I really love this music. And it's like the love for the music actually overcomes the fear of whatever might happen. So I think I've kind of, I can, I can relate, I guess, in a way. Uh, I'm wondering, you know, that was 20 years ago, but you still speak about it with um, a fondness that, that comes through even Zoom. So I'm wondering what, um, what sorts of practices or what, not even what practices, but are there any things that you've taken away from Adamic that are still with you two decades later that have remained like, that were imprinted as a teenager and now as a seasoned professional still, uh, <laughs> still come out to you? There, there are so many. There, are many. there are many specific words of advice from Ken that I remember that I always have coming up in my head in rehearsal or in performance. Um, a selection of those include put the oxygen mask on yourself first. And I always find that um, there is a moment where you get on the podium and you're nervous, in, especially in the opera world, where so much is out of your control, particularly this year during a pandemic where I was conducting opera with, with masks and distancing and plexiglass and all of this. Um, you have to remember that the music comes first. Mm -hmm. and um, let that be the motivation. Mm -hmm. So that comes up all the time. I, I, one of the things I always think of is always study as much as necessary to be prepared for rehearsal, no matter what. So if you show up, you've got to be prepared. Um, that's another sort of mantra of mine. Um, you have to be on the bus to control the bus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're making it a Telerando or, or a... Are you slowing the the tempo down? You have to um, you have to be with the players in order to make sure the bus comes with you. Um, Isn't that the truth? <laughs> it's so true. And never subdivide unless you absolutely have to. That's another one I love. I mean, so much gets in the way if yeah. you can just kind of trust and let people listen. Mm -hmm. um, so. I mean, those are very specific examples, but those come up all the time. Uh, and, you know, apart from that, I think being in front of orchestras like, um, you know, the Milwaukee Symphony and like the Santa Fe Opera Orchestra, when I've stepped on the podium in, in front of this incredible group of musicians, you always have to think it's not about you or about them. It's about what we're trying to achieve together. Mm -hmm. and what does the music say? Um, and, and so that it helps with, you know, with nerves or with um, anything else that might get in the way. Yeah. 
it's where you put where you've learned to put your focus i guess as a result of what you're taught yeah. um that's 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 powerful and that's it's the same the same thing that i said before you know where um where where, where i'm nervous or where i'm anxious i try to think of what the music needs to say and that i'm just a servant to that and that usually usually helps not always but but, but usually quite often so what well, would you i've got sorry one more thing to add um so can i feel like you know the the place the retreat is was separate from school at michigan mm -hmm. with ken in a way because he had his colleagues there and with different colleagues and at michigan and the place and he didn't he wasn't distracted by you know um, academia happening simultaneously so he created for me this um ability to get in touch with my sort of like wonder of you know music and um that's another thing that that has come with me is that you know we always talked about don't be afraid to be vulnerable don't be afraid to be childlike to react to the music as if it's happening for the first time uh and it's a real gift to to come back to that in front of people you know uh especially prickly people <laughs> you know and we'll encounter them in orchestras and opera companies and it's best to just you know water off a duck's back and uh mm -hmm. I, I feel like people come to you if you allow vulnerable vulnerability mm -hmm. that's that's powerful and that's beautiful um yeah that's great that you <laughs> 20 years ago that's a lot that's a lot there's a lot Quentin. so what would you say to yourself uh before like the pre madamic quentin smith what would you tell that person uh, as they're thinking about going, what would you say? <laughs> I would say you're safe. Hmm. Um, I would say be open to the experience. And I would say some things that you will be told or be taught or uh, learn will not make sense yet. Some things won't make sense for years. Hmm. Um, some, you know, I still it, find myself thinking about time there and at school with Ken, like um, lessons I was taught that, you know, didn't make sense, but then all of a sudden, okay, that's, that's what we were trying to get at. Uh, so it's, um, those are the things I would say going in. Mm -hmm. That's great. Clinton, is there anything that you would say to people who are thinking right now about, um, about being part of Madamak or thinking about, uh, you know, or, or, or unsure about it, what would you say to people who are just on the fence or looking forward to it? What would you say? I would say it's a wonderful experience and there are things you will learn that you will take with you throughout your career. And you will meet people with whom you'll be colleagues throughout your career. And uh, it's, a, it's an important experience and it's a unique experience. So enjoy it and be open. That's fantastic. Quinn, it's been great having you on the, on the show. It's not a show, but <laughs> in this interview, thank you so much for your time. And uh, it's great to meet another Madamak colleague. So take you care. You too. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye.